Well, we're here at Victoria Park for Vintage Collingwood, thanks to Get Wines Direct. And my guest today is a former teammate of mine, a 1990 Premiership player and one of the toughest men ever to don the black and white, Craig Kelly. Craig, thanks for joining us. Sorry, not, not as tough as you. Uh, not well, as I'm, tough as you, Tony. I mean, I, look I at know. your head. It's a very ordinary <laughs> smashed up head. Now concentrate with well, it. I am. I'm so excited to be back. How good's the ground look? It is sensational. Um, can we get on to your career? Yes, yes. We yes. want to get on to your career because in Benny 1989, Dillon. you Dillon came Dillon. to the Collingwood Football Club from Norwood, a very famous uh, club. Tell us yes. about your career in South Australia before you moved over. Our big uh, Neil Barn was my coach and uh, Mickey Taylor... Uh, had gone back, he'd played over here and then he went back and he was um, playing uh, with Nord at that stage and then as came towards the end of the uh, 88 season he said I'm going back to Collingwood. He said it's about time you came back. I was drafted in uh, 86, uh, the first draft, and I had no idea who Collingwood was. I just wanted to test you out and I asked you whether you had the gumption to maybe have a go at one of the toughest players ever to play football, Dermy Brereton. Tell us what happened. Um, we rock up to this beautiful hotel, and there's Dermy. Remember, he had a full, yeah. full length, um, like, looked like a, a grizzly bear was on his back. It was this beautiful, magnificent coat, and he's striding through the hotel like this. And I'm going, there's Dermy. Like, he was just iconic, he was, wasn't he? Yeah, yep. And Lee really wanted to beat Hawthorne because it was just after he'd obviously left. And he got a bit serious about it. We had the team meeting downstairs, and he said, Ned, I'm going to play you on Dermy. And you, you came up to me and he said, mate, he's going to smash you really early unless you hit him. I couldn't sleep a wink that night. Could not sleep a wink. Got up in the morning, was still nervous. Ball happened to float down and towards the forward line. I was behind Dermy and I had swung really hard and missed the ball and hit him on the chin. Yeah. And he sort of went down on his knees and... I thought, oh, I hope he doesn't get up. And he got a bit <laughs> groggy and I ran off and he went off. I thought, this is OK. I remember looking over at half time or three quarter time just before we were about to uh, finish the quarter. And it was like this cage line going up and down the boundary line. And I thought, he's going to come back on. And I put myself, Tony, <laughs> rolled my ankle and conveniently <laughs> came off. <laughs> True, you watch, I came off. Yeah. As I came past him, he said, I'm going to kill you one day. Yeah. I've got scars and everything to prove that he, he, he got his way. Now, uh, you're now a player manager, and that's what you're talking about, the elite sports property. Now, you must take some of the stuff that you did off the field <laughs> into the acknowledging to the other kids who you look after now that they're not kids, they're young men. Yeah. But the lessons that you, you learned learn. from what happened, do, yeah. do you...? Yeah, I tell them some... Um what I say, vetted stories some, some <laughs> of, of my past. I also taught them a lot about the business stuff. Like I bought my first house across there. Yep. First thing I ever did when I came over was buy a black Maverick, Ford Maverick, and then interest rates went to 19 and 22 per cent. So I was in a fair bit of trouble. And it's all the, the, nothing, the sausage is still the same, mate. It's still yep. a game of footy. The kids are still trying to get, the, get their way through. They've got better structures and systems. Hopefully what they're learning and they can learn from grey-haired old men like you or <laughs> blokes with no hair and fat bellies like me, you know, that hopefully they can learn from that. And that's all I try and teach them is treat a place like this and your club with respect. Um, treat the fact that you do not get this opportunity for very long and it will be handed over to someone and you don't own it. And yeah. it doesn't owe you a thing. It's given you every opportunity and if you stuff it up, that's your fault. Well, Ned, it's been an honour to have you on here, but it was an honour to play football on the same footy field, and I mean that sure. sincerely, and thanks for joining us today. And uh, thank you for jo watching Vintage Collingwood uh, on behalf of Get Wines Direct. Next time you want to uncork a fine drop, make sure you head to getwinesdirect.com or go in-store to 161 Burnley Street in Richmond and take advantage of an array of great offers from Collingwood's major partner.